No? I'm too oh, sexy God. for my shirt. Come on, I'm too sexy for my shirt. You look it's got smiley now. faces on it. Come on, this is a cool shirt. <laughs> yeah? It does look like It's your, your it's true story. story. Thank you. You get it. My date with you, date with destiny. Oh. Right? Oh, that was that cool. Okay, okay, Tony Robbins. Does it say colon? Yeah, like where does it say? It's supposed to say colon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it doesn't say colon. This is my favorite shirt, and you're ruining it. Jeez. Oh, so, tonight, thank you. God, at least one guy's being nice. All right, so this week we're going to talk about cancer, yes? You know the doctors. We're not going to talk about them again. We went through that last time, okay? But the concept thing is simple. I want to make sure that we get each and every one of you to your 100% potential. You guys get that, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole purpose of this is to you become, I want to download this into your brain so you can become a master of your own body, a master of the number one mindset, number one on nervous system, number two is nutri number three nutrition, four fitness and five maximi minimizing toxic exposure so that you can be in control and be fearless in the plight of this stupid COVID-19 thing. Right? Because in the end, we got to realize that we as human beings don't think we know as much as we know. We think we're smarter than we are. Dr. Andy was talking today about the number one virologist, the guy who studied viruses, in the world understands 1% of the viruses on our planet. And yet we think we're arrogant enough to be able to come up with a solution to this through injections, vaccines, which have poisons and things in it. It's insane. But what do we know? And Dr. Andrew said this today, if we cut, you cut yourself, you heal. We know that. And we know if we make sure the body's at its maximum potential, you will heal. That's it. You see, here's something that's crazy. They're talking about this rise in cases. They closed the gyms again. They closed the, the, the restaurants. You know, you understand what a case truly means? A case means that they have a positive test confirmed with all of the symptoms associated with the situation. But that's not what they're doing. You see, they were counting deaths, right? Until there weren't enough deaths to scare you. I'm not kidding, that's legit, because they want to control us. So they said, well, if we don't have enough deaths, we're gonna have to start counting cases, okay? Well, not enough people are getting sick with cases, so we're gonna redefine what cases are and call them positive tests. We'll call cases positive tests. You ever, okay, the guy, you realize something that the test that they're using was actually designed for HIV. You guys know that, right? No. All right, and the guy who developed the test, he figured out that there was an, an, M, an M messenger RNA, a fragment of a messenger RNA, which is a certain DNA sequence. Hey, babe, come on in. Okay, there's a spot for you right there on the front row if you like it. Yeah. Okay, so the DNA sequence which matches HIV. Right? But it was so tiny that they couldn't measure it. So what they did is they duplicated it. Okay? So they doubled it. Then they doubled it again. And they doubled it again. When they finally got to doubling 37 times, they could see it. You with me? So when they multiply it 37 times, some people showed up positive with HIV, some people showed up negative with HIV, and both people were expressing AIDS. So he confirmed that HIV did not cause AIDS. Okay? People didn't like that very much, but they liked the test. Now, by the way, just before the COVID thing hit, he, he was murdered. No one asked me that. I said, hey, you got a weirdo. Kids about stuff, okay? But what they did, they found out you kept replicating the test. So instead of 37, if you replicate it up to 100 times, 100% of the time you're positive. You follow what's happening here? So I find a fragment inside of you, a tiny little chunk that says COVID-19. You replicate it 37 times, which is a legitimate amount, and you show up negative for the test. We don't like that. So let's replicate it 100 times. Now you're positive for a super, you have a positive case. You have a positive case. And everybody has a, and, and the cases are what? Increasing. And then what do they do? They come up with a magical vaccine and they replicate it 37 times instead of 100 times, and the vaccination works. What do you guys think? 
Okay. Got it? Start using your cortex. Stop listening to the rhetoric and start reading the truth. And that's the purpose of this master class. Okay, you with me? But again, we're gonna get you back to your 100% potential. Because if you have 100% potential, I don't give a crap what the next virus, the next cancer, what it is, you guys will be healthy. Because you're gonna be the group, right? Come on, send me COVID-20, COVID-21, COVID-27, I don't care, come on, hit me. Because you're gonna be the powerful group. Because you understand the principle of what health is, and healing always has and always will come from where? From the depth, above, down, inside out, not outside in. Putting things into your body is not gonna make you stronger, right? So what would that look like? What would it look like, seriously, if you could express your full potential, okay? What would that look like in your life? Ladies, would you warm up the room? I'm starting to freeze over here. What would that look like, truthfully, in your life? You're expressing 100% potential. You're able to do whatever you want in your life. Tell me what that looks like. Happiness. Yeah, fulfilled life. Okay, but that's yeah. generic. Grandkids. I want specific. What kind of grandkids? Are you going to be the fine grandma? Yeah. Right? Or are you going to be the wheelchair Traveling grandma? Traveling all over the world. Fine grandma. Experiencing Traveling, life. experiencing life with your grandchildren. Playing with those kids, right? You got your grandkid right there. And what are you doing? I mean, think about it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. What would it look like for you? Just to be able to move without pain. The and able work I could get done is seriously. But see, that, there's some value there, right? That's going to help him increase the value. And men got a lot of strength from being powerful and providing for their family. That's a huge thing for men. What about you, Jim? Just enjoying with my grandkids. Grandkids, see? You see what I'm saying? It's about the experiences you have in your life. And instead of experiencing sickness, disease, and fear, you're going to experience all this wonderful. That's what this office is about expressing whatever you choose for as long as you want, for as much as you want. I know you like going to the lake as much as your husband does, but how about that? Taking your grandkids out to the lake and have, teaching them how to water ski and surf and do all those wonderful fun things. How would that connect with your grandchildren? How would that, what would that feel like? Great. Instead of what? Connecting with the wheelchair grandma. And that's and the future holds. See, are we getting more medical care or less medical care in the history of our country? Yes. No, yeah. medical treatment, more or less. More. more treatment than ever. More drugs, more pills, more surgery than ever. And as a consequence of all that intervention, we're definitely healthier as a world, as a country, right? Why are we sicker? If there's more intervention, how come we're sicker? We're making money. You know, profit side. I mean, it's not, not providing health. It's not, no one's getting healthy. No one's getting healthy. They're simply managing the situation, right? So, recap from last week. We learned that our, our immune system, we can build that healthy immune system, right? And the focus of today is strengthening our de natural defenses, okay? And what is, so what is cancer? Okay, and this is a really thing, neat thing. It's a disease which abnormal cells divide. They are our cells, though. They are our insight. It's our body. Our cells have mutated, okay? So that's what it is. Without control to stop the spread. That's what cancer is. So what negates the, the cancer cells? What kills the cancer cells? White blood cells. The healthy immune system. What'd you say? White blood cells. White blood cells, which is the immune system. So your immune system curbs the spread. Cancer is when this is uncontrollable and the immune system can't keep up. Does that make sense? And the cancer cells take over, okay? So the, the physiology of cancer. Our body's made to grow trillions of different cells. We have 70 trillion cells inside of our body. And sometimes, guess what? Something hits a cell and it mutates. But then guess what? It's okay, because we have the immune system to protect it, okay? When cells become old or damaged, they become replaced, all right? So here's how it works, okay? So your, your, uh, your heart, okay, um, is pumping away, all right? Pumping away, pumping away, pumping away, all right? Then all of a sudden, these, the, the brain makes a phone call down through the nervous system to the heart and says, hey, how's it going down there? Oh, you know, Charlie, Bill, and Sam, they're a little bit tuckered out down here. He says, no problem. Let's send them on vacation. Let's send them to the spleen. Okay? So they all, hey, here, go, go on a vacation. So picture the spleen like going to Tahiti. Okay? 
and you get there, they have massage ladies and their little umbrella drinks, and, and you get all the neat stuff and good food, and it's like, oh man, this is like heaven, this is so awesome. They go on vacation, they come back ready for service. Does that make sense? That's how it works. It really does. Now the fancier term is called apoptosis. So when cells become damaged, they're replaced by new ones, okay? Cancer is when the process doesn't work. Every single cell inside your body has a lifespan. Heart cells last about a year, okay? That's how long they last and they go out of service, okay? So if you have a whole bunch of cells and let's say 50% start getting sick, what's gonna happen? The brain will make a phone call and replace those cells with healthy ones, right? So as long as the communication network is happening, the body grows healthy cells, right? So the brain talks to the heart and you keep replacing the cells. So think about this from the chiropractic perspective. We get an adjustment, right? One adjustment, does that fix the problem? No. no. So now after an entire year, let's say that your spine is fully corrected, you're now at baseline zero. You understand that, right? Now with 100%, so 100% connection now is gonna now a year later is when you get the healthy heart. Does that make sense to everybody? Because you're replacing the cell. The body's correcting, and once you get to 100% nerve function, the brain can replace the cells with healthy cells because the communication network is right. So it takes a minimum of two years of adjustments before every cell in the body is replaced and healthy again. Right? So why should you keep going once it's fixed? For that reason. Keep that system going, right? So that's the whole idea. So. Cancer is an unsuccessful immune response. That's pretty much what it simplifies. Cancer is the result of rapid production of damaged cells that overcomes the ability of the body to fight them off. Does that make sense? Okay. Cancer statistics. You guys know these stats, right? We're, the, we're one of the worst countries as, our, as it relates to all these different things. We consume the least amount of healthy food. We're, we're cardiovascular. We're just a sick world. We're a sick, sick country. So we have to overcome our fear. I want you to take one second, and I want you to visualize this, and I want somebody to talk, okay? I don't want to be the Zena mouthpiece, okay? Ready? Your medical doctor says to you these words, it's cancer and it's malignant. And that means it's aggressive, and what's he going to say next? Yeah, yeah. so long to live. Chemotherapy, radiation surgery, he's going to start putting definitions of your timeline, how long you got to live. All that's going to hit you. Picture that. How's it make you feel? Terrified. Respond to that question. Terrified? What else? One person, I need five. Devastated. Devastated. I didn't do enough. I didn't do enough. Determined to do more. Determined to do more. Oh my God, I watch my kids grow up. I'm gonna lose my children. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to watch my kid. You're not, you're, you're not gonna be able to see your daughter walk down the aisle. See what I'm saying? You see, we don't think like this. We just live our lives, woohoo, haphazard, whatever, who cares about five essentials until you're sitting in the room. And that's when it gets serious. But statistically speaking, 50% of this room, males, are gonna die from cancer. Two out of three women are going to die from cancer. Pretty high statistics. Not in this room. Well, okay, rephrase. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this room. And that's the point of the master class, right? So you guys can become masters. But I want you to remember, this is about you, but it's not about you. Okay? This is about you taking the message to the other people so that they can understand what we do. Because if we keep it into this little, little group of folks right here, we're not going to make an impact on the planet. I want to change healthcare. Do you understand what this is about? Mm -hmm. This isn't about my ego. This is about the future of my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, and our country as a whole. Mm -hmm. And until somebody steps up and embraces the concept that our bodies are freaking strong and powerful. We just gotta make it more powerful and strong and we don't have to worry about all this garbage. We get away from the money side of things, as somebody said, right? We get into the health and healthcare. And we don't want that. I don't want anybody in your life or my life to have to experience that. Because the 
physiology of cancer. Overcoming the fear of the essential. Mindset, okay? Let's think about this for a second, okay? Stress. Stress is not the problem. What's the problem? How you deal with it. Chronic stress. Because everybody has stress, right? It's the chronic stress, right? It's the fact that you're, every day you go to your phone, you open it up, what's the first thing on your thread? Cases increasing. Closing the bars, closing the liquor stores, close, or the, open the liquor stores, excuse me, I can put, we're gonna double, we're gonna you know, increase the hours of the liquor stores, right? <laughs> but, but do you see what I'm getting at? Is, is they scare the crap out of you. Now, when you get scared, what happens to your physiology? What organ's gonna fire up? Adrenaline. Adrenaline, right? And adrenaline's gonna crank up that. When adrenaline goes up, what goes up? Cortisol. And what's cortisol do? Makes what go up? Sugar. And what does cancer love to eat? Sugar. 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 Dr. Ray, want to, I'll tell you a scary story about a, a person I know. Okay, got his blood test run. Okay, sugar's running 135, A1C's 5.7. Okay, normal's 100, and your A1C should be top end about 5.5, roughly. Okay, you know who that was? Mm -hmm. Me. Guess how much sugar I was eating? Zero. Zero. Where was the sugar coming from? Yeah. Stress. Stress. Because of a process called gluconeogenesis. Mm -hmm. Genesis means to create, mm -hmm. right? Gluco means glucose or sugar, and neo means glue, creating new sugar. The body was creating sugar. For what purpose? For the bear fight which is here all the time. It's chronic stress. So that's the problem, is the chronic stress that gets us, okay? And the process is gluconeogenesis. So we have to learn how to mitigate stress to the best of our ability. Because even if you don't eat sugar, you're creating sugar, and that's the only fuel that cancer can run on. You know that cancer can't eat fat, right? So if you decrease all the sugars in your diet and feed yourself fat, cancer can't survive unless you're stressed out. And what are they doing to us every single day? Stressing us, Stressing us out. Let's do the best we can. If you're not wearing a mask, we're going to yell at you in church, aren't they, Cole? Cole had a fight with the uh, nuns every day in church because he wouldn't wear a mask. Right? And they would come up and they would torture this poor man. And what did he say? I put my faith in God, not in a mask. In church, and they still gave him crap about the answer, his answer to his question. And that's insane, right? So what's unique about cancer cells? I just said it, what was it? What's unique about the energy system of cancer cells? Sugar. Only run on sugar. Only run on sugar. So if you lower your sugar intake, right, and you make sure and mitigate your stress, what's gonna happen to your sugar? They're gonna plummet. The cancer can't survive. You know, they, they have a cancer treatment, which I think is terrible, but it's good. You know what they give you? Insulin and metformin. What does insulin and metformin do to sugar levels? Decreases them. Decreases them. That's what they give you when you have diabetes. So they're making you a hypoglycemic to decrease the fetal cancer so our cancer cells disappear. We don't want that, because that's going to decrease the cancer treatment industry. We don't want that. See what I'm saying? I mean, they have answers, but we don't want to. We don't want to do that kind of stuff. So, damaged fats versus good fats. Okay, what are the five good fats? Tell me. Hook me up. Olive oil. Olive oil. Butter. You gotta stop because I know you're gonna Organic get them all. Coconuts. Okay. What'd you say? Organic. Nuts and seeds. Good. Organic coconut. And we'll, we'll go with organic. Just say organic. Okay. Okay. We're just gonna assume organic for everybody. Okay. What'd you say? Coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're almost there. Butter. What else? Grass-fed butter. Good job. And Okay? That should be a mainstay of your diet. That's the number one fuel source your body should run on. And as long as you're running with a machinery that understands how to process fat as fuel, you don't have to have sugar in your diet. Okay? We been sold, remember the, the pyramid, right? Lots of grains, okay? At the bottom of the pyramid, and the fats, because fats make us fat. No, damaged fat makes us fat. Can anybody explain to me the concept of a damaged fat? 
Content. Spoken. Um, I drug you. Right? It breaks the. You said it. Say it again. Louder. I drug you. Um, Hydrogenized. That's an interesting way to say it, but hydrogenated it, but okay, hydrogenalized. I like that word better. I'm going to call it hydrogenalized. I like that. Thank you, though. But hydrogenated fats. You see, what kind of fats are good for us? We just said. So what would be some examples of some bad fats? Candy. Okay, that's sugar. Not, not fat. Potatoes. That's sugar. Okay. Hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated what? Vegetable oil, right? Soybean oil. Canola. Canola oil. Mm -hmm. Those are your damaged fats. And why are they damaged? Because <coughs> man messed with them. Because man messed with them. That's pretty much God food, God, <coughs> man, God food or man food, right? But what do they do with them? You see, years ago, here's what they said. Somebody re did a research study which said saturated fats make it causes plaquing in your arteries and causes heart disease, which is a complete lie. Okay? Well, the study was completely flawed, but they built an entire industry around it. Remember? And who's, who's old enough to remember low cholesterol, no fat foods, right? And the secret code for low fat is high sugar. Right? So they modified our diet to go to that and we're sicker than we've ever been. Bless you. Right? So if the idea is what they did is they took oils from what? Vegetables, right? Because vegetables are good for us. And if we take vegetable oil, it must be good for us. But they found out the oils with rancid, they go rancid. Rancid oil, I'm talking about, I say rancid oil. Oil. Okay, so it's spoil. So they had to fix the spoilage to make sure they could sell the oil. So they hydrogenated it. They added hydrogen iron to change the configuration of the molecule from a human consumable food product into something that's not a food product. And, and canola oil is simply uh, what's called rapeseed oil. It's an industrial lubricant. It was never meant to be consumable food. But because it's stable at high temperatures, it's a good cooking oil. Is it? As you integrate all this stuff into your cell membranes. And, what, and what's your body made out of? Every cell inside your body has a big, like think about a marble. The outside part of the marble is what? The cell membrane, which is made of what? Body. Fat, right? Every cell, the outside membrane is made of fat. What is every neuron in your body made of? Fat. fat. What's your brain made out of? Fat. Fat. And we wonder why dementia is on the rise. Because what do they tell you to do? Don't eat fat. But if you can eat fat, it makes you do the damaged fats. See, all the studies have been done on fats causing heart disease and diabetes, cancer, and the like is tied but they never, they never check the type of fat. They never check the organic butter, the avocados, the coconut oils. They check the cookies and the, the cakes and the stuff that the cooking oils, the Crisco's, the, what they like. You see, damaged <coughs> fats are good for Okay, so the fats I gave you are the ones you use. Okay? Sorry, you like the difference? So we're gonna talk about that, okay? Commercial versus farm raised, okay? Convent, now, are, are, do meats cause heart disease? No. 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 Conventionally, commercially grown cause heart disease. Yes. Can anybody tell me why? Antibiotics. Good. So they had antibiotics. Why do they add antibiotics to a cow? Because it's too many of them together and it's all crammed up. They're all crammed up in a pen, right? Because if, you if you're in Texas and there's like 100,000 acres worth of grazing cattle, that's fine. But if you're in Colorado where you got limited space, you can cram them in a pen. So we got to give them antibiotics, which means the cow is now antibiotic laden and you eat the cow, guess what you're getting? Antibiotic, antibiotic which creates what? Antibiotic resistance. And if we needed the antibiotics in an emergency situation, they wouldn't work here. What else is in a cow? Hormones. Hormones. For what purpose? Give me the, you know the hormones? Give me some. Give me one. Estrogen. Estrogen. What does estrogen do? Makes women? Grow fast to produce more milk. More milk, okay. Also makes them, so women are a little more round than men. Why? Because of estrogen, okay. And cows are sold by the pound. pound. So we make them fatter. Ooh, to make them fatter, we can make more weight. We get more money for the cow. What else? Corn. Corn. Grain Every bin. piece of corn in the United States is GMO, genetically modified. And inside of it, they have integrated a pesticide. 
so they don't have to worry about spraying the corn. So the bugs eat the corn and die. So the bugs will stay away from the corn. What about us? What are we eating? The pesticide. If you're eating a cow that's had feed corn, what are you eating? And sugar, because corn is sugar. What else do we feed cows that aren't good for cows? Grains. Grains. And candy. You guys all meant that you sat through the candy one. I showed a video of them of farmers eating pig cows' candy. Because why? Sugar makes us fat. Because sugar gets converted into fat and makes us fat. And cows are sold by the pound. So grains, what's on the grain? Well, the grain is GMO, it's modified. There's no GM, non-GMO modified. Uh, who doesn't understand the term GMO? Just FYI. You good? Okay, just making sure. Don't feel silly to ask questions. It's totally, this is the purpose. I know this stuff. This is your class, right? So they spray what on the GMO grain? Pesticides and herbicides, which the cows eat, which means we eat it. If you're going to choose to eat your, I, I, if you make a budgetary decision, should I eat more organic vegetables or organic meats? What should be your first priority? Meat. Meat. Can you explain why? Besides Michelle. You can wash the vegetables. Good. That's a good thought. Okay. But the meats have the deal. It's called toxic bioaccumulation. We're at the top of the food chain, right? So let's say we're eating fish. What's at the bottom of the ocean? Mercury. All the crap we threw down there, all the heavy metals and the poisons and things like that. So the little tiny algae eat, the, eat by the little fishies, so they get, ten, let's say it takes 10 algae to make one fish, one little fish, and 10 little fishies to make a bigger fishy. Then 10 of those fishies to make a bigger fishy, and the fishy, 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 till we finally catch a, a marlin or whatever and eat it. How much toxin do we just get? It's called toxic bioaccumulation. So if budget becomes an issue, which it shouldn't because bottom line is, how expensive is it to be sick in this country? You've got to make health your priority, right? So, ratios, okay? One to 24, two to four, okay? Top of the food chain, just explained it. So, what am I talking about? Two to four and one to 24 ratios. What am I talking about? What are antibiotics mm -hmm. and stuff? Not toxins. No. Nutrients? Nutrients, what are the nutrients I'm talking about? Anybody? Protein? Nope. Organic liberty. <laughs> Good, okay. It's omega fatty acids. Okay. When we think of omega threes, what do we think of? Fish, <laughs> okay? But guess what? Cows have omega threes too. This is the ratio of omega sixes to omega three fatty acids. So let me explain the omega three, omega six, omega 12 concept, all right? For every, so you have fat, 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 protein portal, fat, 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 protein portal. So stuff can get in and out of the cell, all right? So it's an omega-3, you have protein portal, protein portal, protein portal, three, and then, then or sorry, fat, 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 omega-3 in the protein portal. Fat, 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 protein portal. So there's more protein portals, you get stuff in and out easier, okay? So it makes it easier to circulate the nutrients in and out of the cell. That's an omega-3. Omega-6 has one every six, so there's less protein portals and a little more inflammatory, okay? So this is the ratio. This is a grass-fed cow, and that's a grain-fed cow. That's omega-3 to omega-6, and omega-6 are inflammatory. What about 12? Even worse, okay? Does that make sense? Now remember, there's, in, our, in our, so our supplement line, the omega, the optimal omegas, it's got sixes and then threes, at what ratio would you guess? Just like a cow. This is a grass-fed cow. And that's where they get their omegas, is from consuming grass, which is a cow, that's what the cow was made to eat in the first place. Grass-fed cow. Make sense? We got to replace, so you got an action step tonight, okay? This week's challenge, I want you to remove the damaged fats and switch, switch all your meat products, okay? This stuff is bad. These processed meats, okay, are damaging your body and making you sick. So I want you to think about your, your action step for this next week is to switch out your damaged fats and switch out your meat products. I want you to get rid of the commercially grown and start working on your omega-3 ratios, getting that switched out from damaged to it from canola, from all your vegetable oils and all those kinds of things.
get back into the five fats we talked about and into those pure non-commercially grown animal products, okay? What Makes about sense? like uncured hams? Um, as it relates to, to pigs, okay? Technically pigs are considered a um, sick animal no matter what you do with it, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you got an organically grown uh, pig, I'm okay with it, but I, I'm not sure. But the answer to that question, I can't answer. Because cow, pigs are just dirty animals. I don't know what else to say. And they, they, I mean, I love bacon, don't get me wrong, because I will eat organically, non-nitrate driven bacon, I love it, okay? And I'm not gonna say for you not to eat it, because I'm not perfect either. But again, try to minimize the pigs. But the mace, we're talking about the three, we're talking about fish, chicken, and uh, um, beef, okay? All right, make sense? There's your action plan. So toxic exposure, we have to minimize. What does cancer love? Cancer loves a toxic environment. In fact, what does cancer love? Let's talk about, now why do we get cancer? Let's talk about that for a moment, okay? Why, is, is cancer good or bad for us? Bad. What'd you say? I mean, Some I, is good. Is cancer good or bad? Bad. Bad, anybody else? Good. Of course I'm gonna be contrary, you guys know that. If you say something, I'm gonna say the exact opposite. Why is cancer a good thing? Makes us take, sit up and take notice of what we've been doing. Good, good idea, but no. The no. immune system. No. The immune system gets worked up? No, that's what she said, good guess, both of you. Okay, you ready for this? Cancer is the body, the brain's decision to make you as healthy as it can be. How's that happen? Uh, that's interesting, Dr. Ray, isn't it? Let's think about this, okay? We're a typical American. What do we eat? You mean more sugar, right? Lots of sugar. What does cancer eat? Sugar. So the brain goes, huh, I can make healthy cells or I can make cancer cells that only can consume sugar, which is all she's eating or he's eating. So I'm gonna make cancer cells, why? Because that's the best way for me to survive. Does that make sense? Well, of course it does, because you're feeding it nothing but sugar. Why would I want a fat burning machine if all I eat is sugar? Makes logical sense, doesn't it? Okay. What else does cancer hate? Oxygen. Mentioned them before. Hates oxygen. So how do we create, how, how, remember the brain's smart, the body's smart, the brain's doing this for us. It's making cancer for us. Why would that be? I don't know. Maybe it's mass. Decreasing oxygen. Maybe it's sitting in front of computer monitors all day, staring and not moving. Maybe it's lack of that. Maybe it's the kids playing video games instead of playing outdoors. See what happens? So you have low oxygen. The brain goes, well, what kind of cell likes a low oxygen environment? Wow, she's giving us sugar and low oxygen? That's cancer. You making sense now? What else do we not eat enough of? Vegetables. Vegetables. Fats. And fats. Let's go with vegetables first, okay? What does cancer hate? Cancer hates an environment that's basic, okay? Your blood, if you have a blood pH of 7.2, cancer can't survive. You can test it with saliva. We have actually strips so you can test your boost your saliva down. Really? Yeah. And you can test it, I think we have some, that's after Amanda. But we do the cancer test, okay? But you, te you test want, it and say, right, 7.2, guess what, cancer can't survive. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So what do we eat none of? Vegetables, except ketchup, of course. That's loaded with sugar, <laughs> right? And so you have the acidic blood. Cancer loves an acidic environment. Is it avocado in a vegetable? Uh huh. Okay, makes sense. Is this making sense? So the brain goes, well, we got a high acidic environment. What kind of cell likes sugar? Loves to eat, loves sugar. Which environment loves to kill me, small? Kill me. Don't wait for me. Let me know you're ready. And then mute the phone. You're in big trouble. Killing me, small. Okay, so let's think about cancer. So we it loves sugar, so we're gonna have a high sugar environment, low oxygen environment. We're not eating vegetables, which is acidic blood. Oh, that's cancer cells. Let's make cancer cells. What else, what kind of environment does cancer love? Toxic. So what do we open? We closed the gyms, we opened up the liquor stores, the fast food stores, closed down the organic markets, right? You can't have a farmer's market anymore. Right, you see what we're doing to ourselves? The brain goes, well, let's see, you're eating 
McDonald's, Burger King, and, and uh, McDonald's, McDonald's, Burger King, and uh, Jack and Wendy's Jack in the Box, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which is toxic. Hmm. Maybe I should make the canister sell it. You see what the body's doing? It's smart. It's intelligent. And you're like, you have cancer. I wonder why I got cancer. <laughs> okay? And again, what do we say about cells? They have a lifespan. Except for one type of cell, which is cancer. So here comes the clone call, okay? The lungs call the brain and says, uh, yeah, dude, I've been down here and there's these guys down here just growing and consuming all my raw materials and they won't listen and they won't stop. It's not a problem, it's called cancer. I'll call the immune system. Hang up there. Boom, hang up the phone. Picks up the phone, dials the immune system. Do they need to jump in the bloodstream, drive to the lungs, and kick the crap out of this cancer and knock it out? Okay, they all accuse of M M80s or AK-47s or whatever, hand grenades, and kill the cancer. Right? Unless there's a communication disconnect between the brain and the immune system or the, or the organ and the brain, either the upstream or downstream, right? If this guy makes a phone call to the brain, you got a subluxation halfway up, the message is never going to receive, the immune system's not going to respond. If it makes it to the brain, goes down to the immune system, there's a blockage, it's not going to respond. Whether it's upstream or downstream, there's no communication, the cancer's going to grow unabated. And then you create the environment to create that cancer, so there we are. So how do you not get cancer? One, two, three, four, five. Right? Mitigate stress. Talked about that gluconeogenesis, right? Get adjusted to make sure your immune system's connected. Eat your vegetables and follow the advanced or core eating strategies. Get your oxygen-rich environment and minimize your toxic exposure. And you do that, and guess what's gonna happen? Surprise of surprises, you don't get cancer, right? Toxins in foods. What's glyphosate? What's a, fan a non-fancy name for glyphosate? Roundup, okay, Roundup. You know that Monsanto's went bankrupt, right? No, but good. Uh huh. Johnson and Johnson bought them. They're still oh, pumping it out. Now Johnson and Johnson's pumping out Roundup. Okay, because Monsanto's couldn't handle all the lawsuits, so they went bankrupt. They bought the the, the, the block rights to, to Roundup. Now they're making billions of dollars. Okay, BPA. What's that? Stuff that you know, cans and you know, plastic, and you know. plastic bottles. Yeah. Estrogenic. Most of your most of your hormone-based cancers are estrogen-driven, okay? And they're not from naturally occurring phytoestrogens, which is natural environmental estrogens, or inside of us that are manufactured. They come from your artificial ones. What happens? Your artificial estrogens plug into a male, male prostate gland. They take where the testosterone is supposed to plug in. And guess what happens? They sit in there, and the estrogens start to dominate. We get male-based, uh, hormone-based cancers. Prostate's most common, okay? Colon also. For women, same exact problem. You drink a bottle of water, your natural estrogens start to drop, you put these artificial estrogens, you have hormone-based cancers, right? The BPA, your plastic bottles, right? Heavy metals, okay? What else? Hormone disruptors, okay? Those are your xenoestrogens, the things that disrupt all the seeds, pesticides, herbicides, they're all hormone disruptive. Glyphosate is the nastiest one of the bunch. They're all hormone disruptors. Toxic accumulation infection. We talked about this already. Okay? So when you want to minimize these toxins, choose your wild-caught small fish like salmon and the cold water fishes like Alaska. Why is a, why are the cold fishes better? There's less toxins in the water. Okay? Oxygen, we just talked about that, right? So oxygen, cancer hates oxygen. Now there's a reason for that, and I'm gonna get a little biochemical on you here, so I'm sorry, but I love talking about this, okay? So, fats, carbs, and proteins are the primary fuel sources that feed into the energy system that generates 26 gallons of gasoline, okay? Now, in the presence of oxygen, okay, in the presence of, you need B vitamins, lipoic acid, you need uh, magnesium, manganese, you need CoQ10 and oxygen all to make sure your foods get processed into an energy source, okay? So let's assume hypothetically all of those are there except for oxygen. You're anemic, potentially, as females especially, okay? Um, men, we can become anemic, but oxygen levels look, so sitting around too much, not exercising, not doing what we're supposed to do, okay? What happens is it pushes all the way up into a process called glycolysis. 
Glycolysis is the process of taking a carbohydrate and converting it into lactic acid. Now that process generates two gallons of gasoline. If you can't get to the end game of 36 gallons of gasoline, what do you think the body's gonna want you to crave more, even more of? Carbohydrates. You're gonna crave sugars because the brain's going, I can't get energy from any other source, but I need you to eat more sugar so I can get some energy out of you. And that's when you get the, the hangries, the hungry angries, okay? That's because you're going through that glycolysis. Lactic acid builds up, and what does cancer level kind of environment, or what kind of environment? An acidic situation. You see what, see what you're doing to yourself? So that's why the max T3 is so awesome, because number one, it cranks up and Pulls up all those wonderful hormones, oxygen is going nuts, and just about the time your cortisol starts to go, because exercise is stressful, you stop and it goes back down again. And then you do it again, oh, cortisol, cortisol, nope, haha, <laughs> trick you. Oxygen, oxygen, cortisol, nope, no gluconeogenesis here. You see how you see the game? So even if you don't use the Max T3 exercise program, you should be doing on off burst training. Okay? If you're, if you're a bodybuilder, you wanna work out with weights, pump like crazy, pump like crazy till it burns so much you can't go stop and just let yourself breathe. Because the minute cortisol goes up, right? Human growth hormone, testosterone, all the beautiful, wonderful muscle building hormones will stop and then you can stop and then the cortisol back into the food outlet. Does that make sense? Hopefully that's a little chemical, sorry, a little chemistry geeky on you, okay? There's what I'm just gonna talk about. So if you go too long, what you're gonna do is you're gonna burst and you're gonna cause cortisol. Classic cardio, you run for a steady period of time and cortisol continues to go up and up and up, right? Make sense? Over here, just about the time the cortisol starts to increase, you stop. And by the way, the fat burning effects of this last 36 hours. So would you rather burn fat for an hour, or sorry, burn calories for an hour, or would you rather burn fat for 36 hours? 36 hours. Hmm. I think that makes more sense, doesn't it? It's not saying, I'd rather see you doing this, you're getting some oxygen, aren't you? It's better than sitting on your fanny. Okay, in chiropractic. So the nerve system controls everything, right? Except cancer cells. See, the nervous system doesn't connect. We talked about this already. So, all cells have a lifespan. They are taken out of service by the nervous system to make new healthy cells. A fancy name is called apoptosis. Now, when I see the word pop, I think about the cells popping. Pop, 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 like little bubbles popping, okay? So the brain goes down and pops all the cells. That's Charlie, Joe, and remember we sent them off to, to the uh, uh, spleen, right? So here, we're gonna create new healthy cells through the process of apoptosis. Cancer cells must be taken out of service by the immune system. So we have to have a strong immune system in order for that to happen. Now, there are natural ways to kill cancer, okay? Let's say hypothetically you go to the doctor or somebody you love goes to a doctor and they find out they have cancer. And they recommend chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. Is that always a bad choice? No. Not necessarily you got a cancer cell that's the size of a basketball and you've got an immune system that's the size of a fly, who's going to win? Cancer. Does that mean you shouldn't start instantly integrating the five essentials? Absolutely not. We get their butts in here getting adjustments and getting them on a program, getting them on a protocol. We have the cancer protocol, everything. Not treating the cancer, but getting the body healthy, right? But there's natural things you can do, like intravenous vitamin C. I don't do that. That's a whole different. That's a nature path, and we'll, I got people that do that for you. So you have people that there's options. Well, the doctor said I have to do chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. No, you don't. And see, you got to be strong enough to know this. There's alternatives to what they're telling you to do out there, right? And that's the purpose of the master class, not just for you, but for who? <laughs> Everybody else out there. The, the 10, 20, 30 people in your sphere of influence so they can learn about what we do and they get their butts in here in order to have your friends say, sorry, I, I got the diagnosis of cancer. Now what? My doctor says can't chemotherapy, radiation, surgery. My chiropractor can help you. What are you talking about? Chiropractors for back pain, neck pain, and headaches. And you should be able to say no because of everything you learned tonight. 
and other things too. Do you see what I mean? That's why you gotta be strong. That's why we're doing the master class so you guys can have the strength and power to feel, feel knowledgeable enough to say, that's a line of crap. I have alternatives for you. Right? But you can't just, it can't be just the typical kind of thing. What you guys do now is, uh, somebody says, I got the migraine headaches, what do you tell them? Go to my chiropractor. Or go to a chiropractor, which is even worse. No. How would you like to go someplace that could get rid of those migraines forever? What would that be worth for you? And how would that impact your life? Because my chiropractor doesn't treat migraines. In fact, he doesn't treat anything. That's like saying exercise is a treatment for cancer. That's like saying vegetables are a treatment for cancer. You see how silly that sounds? But does eating vegetables help you deal with cancer? Right? It's like getting adjusted, right? But you gotta be able to explain that in a reasonable way so that when you refer people in, we're not getting to have to start from base zero. I would love if you guys would just tell one person, they'd walk through this door and say, you know what? I was talking to, to um, uh, um, oh, brain damage. Lana Sue, I call you Sue Ann for some reason. Lana <laughs> Sue, Lana, you've been owning a patient for a thousand years. Lana Sue, and she said that you can make me more healthy and I can have a better life, and I want that. Instead of, well, uh, brain damage. Michelle, God, my brain. Michelle told me, you guys have been patients forever and I can't think of names, right? Michelle told me that uh, you can fix my neck ache. Well, now we gotta start from base zero, don't I? I have to start from zero, explaining the five essentials and trying to build up their knowledge to the point where they can be express that, but then the pain goes away so quickly because we're so amazing and they stop early instead of getting it to the end game. You understand? It's so important the way you express to the patients and friends and family what we do here so they can be healthy too, okay? But it all happens through the nervous system, doesn't it? The, the, the process of apoptosis to, to kill the healthy cells and replenish them, and the immune system to kill the cancer cells. Okay? So it's all about core chiropractic. Okay? Look at the difference. Okay? Look, 14.9. Look at the beautiful arc in there. 34.9. Is it perfect? What's the perfect number? 45. Bam, you guys got it. You know that one. 45. Is that person fixed all the way yet? No. But should they stop if the pain went away? No. no. But if they get this, how healthy is their body? How healthy is their immune system? What happens to their ability to fight cancer? Zero. Get it? You see, and it's through the nerve, through that immune system. Now this is the MRI picture of the patient, okay? Look at the cord damage, okay? You see? You gotta restore that body back to normal. So, we wanna fight cancer, right? Is nutrition a critical essential, yes or yes? Yes. How do you do it? Curcumin. Curcumin is a natural anti-inflammatory. Yes, the stuff you put on your food, that's what we're talking about. But it has to be activated with black pepper in order to work properly, okay? So curcumin in the presence of black pepper helps to fight cancer. It's, an, it's, it's basically, it's, a, it's an anti-inflammatory for the body. It's not an anti-inflammatory treatment. It's a way to make your body anti-inflammatory. Like fish oils makes your body anti-inflammatory, okay? Okay? Dim, I can't say that, okay? But this is huge for estrogen-based or hormone-based cancers. It's an, anti, it's an antioxidant that protects that. Reduce the risk of breast and prostate cancer. It's huge, okay? Garlic, who's heard of garlic being an immune system booster, right? It is, it's huge, okay? It's not only good on spaghetti, it's awesome for fighting cancer, okay? Probiotics. That's the healthy but We talked about this in the last class, remember? So the healthy probiotics. So having the right kind of balance of probiotics. But we, I talked about this or my, when I taught my last class, we talked about the acidophilus. Who's the acidophilus, right? In the yogurts. And they said, we gotta take a lot of acidophilus. You know what we're seeing now, more than ever? Overgrowth of acidophilus. Because we're so smart as human beings that we found acid off, which meant that's the only bacteria that's gonna be good for you. They found that's totally not true. Acid off is balanced by this guy. 
this guy is balanced by this guy. That's why vaccinations that kill a certain bacterial strain cause this one to become pathologic. Then we got to have a new vaccination to kill that one. He's gone, and that affects this guy. Now we got to kill this guy and kill this guy till we're finally wearing masks in, in, a, in a bubble because we can't even expose our body to anything because there's nothing to fight to because our immune system's been destroyed by these things. Crazy, yeah? yeah? So probiotics. So make it easy. Curcumin three. This is your this is your curcumin. This is your uh, turmeric right here, right there. So I want to fight cancer. Take this. Okay. Biodium. That's that stuff for the hormone-based cancers. Okay. So the garlic and parsley blend right here. Parsley is huge antipyretic. Helps kill bacteria, parasites, viruses like COVID, whatever. And the probiotics. This has 50 billion bacteria and I think 37 strains of bacteria in there. It's not just acidophilus. We're getting smarter. Coming up, strengthen your, through the nervous system. We're, next week's all about the nervous system. It's all we're going to spend our time on. Okay, so we're going to hit the nervous system. So before I end today, I want to ask you guys if you have any questions, any comments, any thoughts on how you can serve yourself and serve others. Please jump in, Brian. I think the true problem is that everybody out there doesn't want to hear. Uh -huh. They, they don't. just want to keep doing it until they get that phone call. They want the quick fix. Yeah. And that's so the challenge, pill. isn't it? Because what we're saying here is what? Work and responsibility. Yeah. Right? And who wants to take responsibility well, for their they, own body? They their own? Fill their lives up with so much crap that you can't, they don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. So they what can't, we, they don't hear so it. So we give up? No, I mean, no. But, I but mean, see, that's the challenge, isn't it? But see, then that's my whole point. Is I've been desperately trying for 33 years to help people understand this is a lifestyle. This is a lifetime of transformational health so you can have that epic life now and when you're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, you get to have the life of your dreams all the way up to 120. We should not be sitting in wheelchairs and nursing homes. We shouldn't. We should be out there kicking butt, taking names for as long as we choose to. But we don't make that choice. We always wait, 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 do nothing, 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 and then somebody's going to ride in and save you. And I'll tell you this right now. Nobody's going to ride in and save you. Nobody's going to show it but a white horse to fix it. There's no medical doctor. There's no chiropractor. There's no physical therapist, occupational therapist, acupuncturist, or, or anything that's going to ride up and save you. you know what's going to save you? You, by taking the action steps. But people don't want to hear it, do they, Brian? So what do you do? You keep telling them. You keep dragging them in. You keep explaining. You keep talking. You just keep ramrodding it. But you got to be, and here, let me explain something to you, okay? And Becca, my girl, I love her to death, but she is just so passionate, she pisses people you got to be kind about it. You can't be just ramrodding it down people, right? How would you like a better way? How would you like to have a permanent solution? You know, How would you like to have somebody that could truly help you and, and coach you and engage you to get your health back? What do you miss most in your life because you are expressing this pathology, this, this, this problem, this condition? Tell me what you miss most. Gosh, you know, if I could just get to running again, right? my doctors wouldn't go. To get you so healthy, you'll be running again. How would you like that? Well, my doctor says I can't run. I just did a consultation tonight. The doctor told her don't exercise because it hurt her. <laughs> I said, you're kidding me, right? Question, go ahead. No, I'm just, no, I got a cousin who was just diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Or she had surgery for the third time. And you said surgery for the third time. So just to get rid of the cervical cancer and. I want to have those. And I'm like, I'm not going to have her suffer and have three guys. She's got three kids just like I do. Mm -hmm. And she's only 37. I'm like, 37. she can hear this and something can happen and she can change. Mm -hmm. and so I don't want to do this for her. But she doesn't have a choice unless you give them an opportunity. Right. You see? The, the problem is we're keeping our mouths shut because we're afraid because we don't know what to say. But I want you to feel empowered with the truth 
of what you learned tonight, be able to say, how would you like a way to get rid of your, your situation permanently? And ask her the question, why do you think the cancer keeps coming back? That'd be a great question to ask her. Why does it keep coming back? And she'd say, well, I don't know, because they never got to the cause. How would you like to be the thing that caused your cancer so it goes away forever? Well, I'd like to hear about that. You see the approach? Versus, my chiropractor treats cancer. <laughs> that sounds, does that sound, now you guys understand it now, right? So it doesn't sound as crazy to you, but if you said that to somebody, what would they say to you? You are the biggest whack job I've ever met in my whole life, chiropractor treating cancer. That's insane. But it all made sense, then. it? But the way you approach it, right? You see what I'm saying? So that we have to reach out to people. Your responsibility through this master class is to reach out to others and bring them in and help them understand. And if you need my help, gosh, give me my cell phone number. I'm willing to talk to anybody if I can help them. Just give them my number. Say, you know, I'll, okay, I don't know what to say. But I'm going to do something for you right now. I understand you're suffering from, oh, picture sciatica or something. But I want you to do me a favor. I'm going to dial my doctor's number, and I want you to talk to him. Who do you have to say? Call me. Check. I'll make sure I'm available. Don't call me <laughs> 3. If you're, don't do 3 a.m. I'm not up at 3 a.m. There's things with rules to that. But, again, I don't mind. If I'm available, I'm happy to. More questions, please. You guys feel strong? Do you feel confident that you can, you can now never get cancer? Do you feel confident you can make sure your grandchildren, your children aren't going to get cancer? Your best friend's not going to get cancer? Do you see? Does that mean that everything, we're going to do this perfectly? I still remember a particular case. He came in, um, he did everything exactly like I told him on essential number two. And he got cancer. He said, that's not fair. I did exactly what you told him. Did I? Did you? Come to Aldrey or next. Did you learn? Did you keep growing your heart and your head and your mind? Well, no, I was busy. I didn't have time to drink the classes. Did you do your nutrition? Well, I don't like vegetables. Did you do the exercise? No, I ain't got time for exercise. What about mitigating your toxicity? No, I like my cigarettes. You ain't smoking them. Right? Sounds just like me. <laughs> Let me tell you about this. Here's an interesting case, okay? Guy comes in with cancer in the lung, in the right lung, okay? I asked him, what do you think caused it? He said, smoking. I said, okay, I've got a question for you. When you breathe in smoke, it only, you breathe in, it only went into your right lung, correct? Who can explain why it was in the right lung and not the left lung? Public vision. Public vision. That's what I was Where? In the nerve going to where? The right lung. The right lung. Do you understand? It was blocked to the right lung. Why did it affect the left lung? Because the immune system was called to the left lung that ate all the cancer. But this side never got the phone call. You see how logical that is? And if you had told your friend that, just did tell him that story. You know, think about this. Cancer of the lung. Doctor, My doctor would tell me about a story about a guy. How come it went in the right lung and not the left lung? Logical, isn't it? So are you saying we can smoke? <laughs> <laughs> sure. But here's the thing, and I tell everybody this. We all make choices, don't we? And what I always picture like a graph, okay, with five bars on it, right? And everybody's different. Some people make all their, do like, like my patient who did all of this. All he did was this, right? Just the essential number two at 100%, did zero and everything else. He got cancer. So I'll do a little bit of this. Maybe some people need more help on mindset. Some people need more help here. Some people need more help on that essential number five, right? Everybody has a different level. It's a little bar graphs. That's what makes you an individual and unique. But every time you make a choice, there's consequences, good or bad. So I choose to get adjusted but not take care of my stress. Yeah. Is it going to be as effective if you also work on the stress? Also work on your diet? Also work on your exercise. Then you're going to be perfect. No, God no. I don't expect you to be. But if you do decide to go down a bad path of maybe a night at partying and drinking, I'd recommend maybe a detox, right, and a good exercise to get adjusted. See what I'm saying? You can't be perfect.